Willow Creek Springs presents Healthy Living with your host, okay. Joe Grumbine. Yeah. I would like to welcome everybody to the Healthy Living podcast. And, uh, I'm your host, Joe Grumbine. This is a podcast brought to you by Willow Creek Springs. And um, our goal is to create a platform to discuss all things healthy living. And we have a wide variety of guests. And today we have actually probably one of the most exciting people I've met in the last few weeks and has become uh, uh, involved in our community. Her name's Erin Wilkins. Erin, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, it's a pleasure. And uh, you come with a whole... Um, uh, 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 an armory of credentials and capabilities. And I'd like maybe just to, in your words, sort of introduce yourself as to what brings you here. And, and uh, you know, we can just get a, get a conversation rolling. Of course, yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, my, my background is in psychiatric and mental health nursing. And so I've come from that for last 23 years, I've been doing that. Um, but couple years into it, it just, I realized the, I guess the woes of the pharmaceutical world. And it led me down this huge path of looking for natural remedies, eating organic, eating clean, um, and then doing, you know, whatever you could for air, water, food, <laughs> herbal supplements um, to, to live a healthy, clean life. So in 2010, I started my own alternative holistic practice, um, doing everything from nutritional counseling to detoxing um, to designing herbal medications for people so that they could get off, you know, antidepressants and all of those things that were actually just poisoning them. Wow, that's a, that's a mouthful. So i in in one note, you said something important. You come from you know the 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 psychiatric background, and you know it's funny. People think about oh, I'm going to go to the psychiatrist, and you're going to lay on a couch and talk to somebody, but that's not really what happens. You talk to somebody for a little while, and they go, okay, cool, we're going to put you on some meds. And by the way, these meds are going to take a little while to work, and they might have some really bad side effects including they might cause the problem that you have to be worse um, or even create new problems that you didn't have and but we'll work with it until we get it right and 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 they adjust the meds until whatever happens and and I've watched people you know I don't come from a psychiatric background but I come from a a, a background where I talk to a lot of people that come from a lot of places and you you run into these same things. Oh, you know, they changed my bed. So now I'm all screwed up. And I'm like, whoa, why does that keep happening? And um, so that's really important that you came from that place, recognized it and decided, hey, maybe there's some other, other way, which is powerful. But then you created a place that to me, I can't wait to come visit because like we need these everywhere. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your 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 clinic? I mean, that sounds like what a great concept. Yeah, so I, I tried to design a clinic. I was finding that people would go. They would just, you know, go to the doctor, go to the psychiatrist. They would get a medication. It would make him worse. It would cause another problem. It was completely monetary based. So I like to put myself out of work. I like to help people heal so they're not coming to me all the time. Um, but just, I wanted to create a place, just kind of mind, body, soul, and spirit. So I'll have somebody that comes in, they'll bring a, I just had a little girl that came and saw me. I did some allergy testing on her, um, because she had terrible eczema. And so then I designed an oil that she could use on her body as well as take internally to help treat that eczema as well as hit all of the allergies and the things that were causing it. Um, I always touch base with all my clients at the end, make sure that, you know, what I did is helping and that they understand what's going on, especially with nutrition. Um, so as of a couple of days ago, the girl's doing a lot better. The eczema is healing up and they're right. kind of going one thing at a time, taking, getting her off stuff that's causing that. So, well, and it, it, it seems like, uh, you understand in, in a really 
deep way the whole picture like and it's been great because a lot of the guests that I've had on so far are of that same mindset like you go to the doctor you go to a specialist and then they treat your illness and they set this laser pointer on this thing and say okay here's the problem we're going to fix this problem right here and almost never is it that way? You know, if you were to look at the chemistry of the human body, it's changing second by second, and it's affected yeah. by everything that goes in us and around us, and even our moods, everything is affecting everything. So you're thinking that somehow your specialist is going to come and put this one chemical in you, and it's going to fix this one thing right here. It almost seems crazy. So to go out yeah. and consider things like diet and 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 even treating an issue like eczema is a thing like you can say i got eczema right here okay well let's look at that and say what might be causing it and it seems mm -hmm. like you're going at it from that point of view and and there might be more than one cause like you could be oh, yeah. you know an immune response could be triggered by multiple things at once and that's when mm -hmm. everything gets complicated right yeah, yeah. And I, I know I'm I'm huge on not putting a band-aid and finding the actual issue that's going on because in the traditional medicine world, it is you treat those symptoms and you're not treating the issue. And if you don't treat the issue, it's never gonna go away. Um, you're just gonna create more. So I had a client last week who was in a lot of pain from a workout and said, Oh my gosh, I've tweaked my back. You just need to come massage me and do your osteopathic stuff. And I'm like, okay. So I get there and I'm like, wait a second. No. When did this start? This started because of a relationship issue. Whoa. So we traced it back down to, he was having problem in her, his solar plexus chakra from a relationship problem. Didn't have anything to do with the workout. So we went to a just kind of like a deeper soul level and, and corrected and pulled the energy off that chakra and back pain went away. So that's wild though. You're, you're, you're addressing issues that are happening on multiple planes of reality. And you're just talking about it like, Oh yeah, you know, it's just this thing over here and this <laughs> thing over there. And you know, what's wild is there's people that go through life, you know, and, and some of them have doctorate degrees and, and they're taught, certain things about physiology and chemistry and, and biomechanics and things like that. And they don't acknowledge that you can't necessarily see everything that is happening. And mm -hmm. you also said another thing that I think is important. And I, and I think, you know, the whole concept of this healthy living addresses this a little bit. If you go to the root of the problem and actually work on a cure, which is what I wish doctors would do, like, they they seem to be going after treating the the symptom or or keeping a problem from being worse like st stopping a symptom or, or or reversing a symptom but actually curing a problem is not really ever that i've heard about fortunately i haven't gone to a lot of doctors in my life and i i plan on keeping it that way but <laughs> I talk to a lot of people who have, and and I never hear the word cure. Like even with mm -hmm. cancer treatments, it's, you know, well, at best we're going to get it to go into remission, slow it down, keep it from spreading. But, but yeah, if you go all the way back through history, people have talked about cures, right? People yep. have talked about being cured. People have talked about curing themselves. I think if you can get to the root of a problem, what's really kind of cool is just as much as you can have multiple symptoms from one problem, you could possibly have multiple benefits from one cure. Yep. So for example, if you had eczema, but you also maybe had post-nasal drip and maybe a cough, when certain things happened, Maybe if you could figure out what those certain things were, you might fix all of those things at once, even though you weren't necessarily targeting them because the eczema you can see and you can, you know, yep. put your finger on it. So I think that's kind of a, a, a an important thing. But then going after it, like you could never think to go to a doctor and have him go, well, like 
maybe it's a problem that you're not even thinking like, you know, you go to a doctor, you go to even a chiropractor, you go to a chiropractor and say, hey, my back's hurting over here. They look at it, maybe take a scan or do whatever, and they make an adjustment and they do whatever they're going to do. But it's focusing on this thing or even a like a acupuncturist and they might stick a needle in your foot to help your neck. But generally, it's still symptomatic. You know, the idea is, is, you know, we're going to fix this thing that's wrong with you. But it seems like um, you must have an intuition or an empathic quality to be able to hone in on something like that. How do you how do you recognize a problem so quickly like that? Um, I could sense it, I guess. So it's when people come to me and they say, like, I don't care what you do, just do whatever you need to do to get this problem. And I love that the most when it's not, you know, isolated to I just want to lose weight. Um, because I always believe that losing weight's a byproduct of being healthy. That's just going to naturally happen. Um, so that's harder when someone wants those kind of results. But if they're like, hey, something's happening, um, then I just try to tune in on whatever level that is, whether it's the energy healing piece or the chakra piece. Um, and then once I have their permission, then I'm able just to kind of look at that and do almost like an emotional, spiritual, physical scan of them um, and then kind of go from there. Wow. Well, that's it, it seems like something that I wish more uh, practitioners would embrace like looking at you know i mean i guess most people when you go to the doctor you just want to get better right i mean yep. i mean i don't think that generally people go i mean nowadays i guess somebody might go to the doctor and say hey can i try this pill that i saw on tv but and and, and unfortunately that's the opposite of what i would think but but most people would be like well you know i just want to be better i don't you know i don't know what it's going to take i'm going to you because you went to school for this but you know, tell me what I need to do and, and and let's let's get on with it. I think most people would feel that. And frankly, something that is 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 you know beyond the physical side of things when you get into energy work and you get into um you know chakras and, and reiki and all the different energy uh work, it's just as real as something you can feel and touch, and in some cases you can feel it, but you can't see it and you can't put your finger and 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 say well you see this x-ray there's a broken bone here you can see yeah. this line where your bone is cracked well you can't do that with a, a solar plexus uh or a flare <laughs> <laughs> true true i do i do try to take it to a little bit of a level that people can see the, the rods that i created that are similar to like what muscle testing would be that a lot of chiropractors do. Um, the rods will open and shut to the degree of either allergies or negative positive energy um, or how good something is for someone when I create a, an herbal medication for somebody. And so people can see it with their own eyes. Energetically, these things are opening and they're closing. And right, it's just yeah. through it's through the the muscle memory that they have in their body of whatever they've consumed or whatever it is they're holding in their hand. So for a lot of people, if it doesn't freak them out, they're like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. Like every yeah. time I eat, you know, eggs, I had this weird rash. And here these rods are saying, like, no, they're very bad for you, you know. So that's interesting. And you know, the thing, the thing that I guess again. In, in Western medicine, it's not Western medicine, it's it's allopathic medicine, I guess. But yeah. the, the, the idea that there's one thing wrong, the idea that there's an answer to solve that one thing is sort of contrary to everything. Even though, I mean, sometimes a sensitivity or 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 realizing an issue with a, a maybe a trauma or something like that, and 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 going back and dealing with something that maybe you didn't notice or see um, could have a lot of things. But like something like inflammation, um, you know, can trigger a response all over you, every everywhere. Oh, yeah. and, and it might not happen immediately. Like like people are sensitive to foods today, 
because they're eating foods that are grown all around the world and our gut hasn't had a chance to uh, see how I r rolled the gut into that. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> it's an inside joke, folks. Read the blog and you'll know. But the point is, it's like 10,000 years ago, people only ate food that was grown around them for generations mm -hmm. and their gut bacteria got used to that food and it knew how to consume it and to process it. Now we eat food that could be grown anywhere on the planet or on some other planet. And frankly, our gut doesn't know what to do with a lot of it. And so when it doesn't know what to do with it, a lot of times it'll trigger an immune response, which can have any problem known to man. I mean, literally, like your body can create anything from a tumor to a swollen eye to a cough to anaphylactic shock. I mean, it can just any problem, your body could just make it happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and it is. It's so connected. I had another client that was like, I am having crazy stomach pains and I'm having, you know, I can't go to the bathroom. I'm just completely blocked up. You know, what food should I eat um, to kind of clear this up? And I said, well, you know what? Maybe it's not just that. It could be something else. And so he was complaining of a, his toe was hurting, his big toe on his right foot. And so uh using foot reading the big toes connected to the brain he was having trouble with some past stuff of stuff that happened with his mother in the past and just kind of reliving some of that um which was affecting his chakra right in the gut area causing the blockage and as soon as we kind of pulled that off of him immediately the toe stopped hurting he was able to go to the bathroom um it had nothing at all to do with food um, wow. But it was affecting so many things on a very physical level, but it was completely emotional. So I'm kind of curious, you know, when somebody goes into medical training, whether it's nursing or, or a doctor or surgeon, whatever, the, the focus is scientific and, and um, you know, following the scientific method and, and, and cause and effect are, are mostly involved. And, and there's whatever, however many hundreds of years of, you know, this training really only goes back hundreds of years where uh, non-traditional training goes back thousands of years. Thousands, yeah. And, but what would cause you, like at one point you decided to go into medical training and, and you began that schooling process and you began you know, going through the training for that, which meant you had a mind that was open to the scientific method. I mean, I'm sure you had a desire to help people because generally I think that's what brings most people to the medical world. But now what you're talking about is so far away from the things that they teach in medical school, like they would never acknowledge chakras in any medical training course ever. And 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 I mean, hell, they don't acknowledge the endocannabinoid system that's been yep. proven and 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 exists. And so what caused you to go down, you know, this totally different pathway? So I mean it was, it was a desire to help and to heal like that led me to the nursing. You know, I just had this, especially with people that were locked up in their mind that had you know these mental conditions that kept them almost like bound like like a prisoner in their in their mind and I wanted to help heal that um and then I found that the traditional ways of oh, okay you've got a diagnosis of schizophrenia so we're going to give you all of these meds which are going to cause problems and we'll give you all these other meds and um, working at state hospitals, I found, you know, each person was having 15, 20 medications, and I was nothing more than a glorified drug dealer. Mm -hmm. And I would go into my little cubicle, and here they all came, and they got their little cup of juice, and all of these terrible medications. Um, I had a chance to see one of the gentlemen that I work with, who was, he was, gosh, I think he was 19 when I first met him, and voices had told him to jump out of a second story building window or his, or that God would kill his mom and sister. Whoa. So he jumped and it permanently crippled him where he had a walker, um, you know, had a catheter. And then 15 years later, I saw him again and he was overweight and drooling and it was the medications and it was mm. awful. 
And I just, I can't, I didn't want to be a part of that um, any longer. And so I feel like the techniques that I learned in nursing of like, what is the problem and how do we treat it? Um, I still use those, but I just go a little bit deeper and I don't, it's not just physical. It, it can't be. So whatever that point is, physical, spiritual, emotional. So what, what kind of training, like you, you've been running this clinic for now 12 years, you said, and obviously practice is the thing that really gives you your experience and, and yep. people don't realize you know that term where lawyers practice law and doctors practice medicine and and clinicians practice everybody that's actually doing something for real is just practicing and and if you stop practicing you get old and rusty real quick um, and if you keep practicing you can get pretty sharp and 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 uh, capable um, I'm, I'm imagining that the last 12 years have probably taught you more than any training that you went through, but I'm curious to, to see what, you know, how did you go about training uh, to learn these other techniques and, and uh, you know, methodologies that you're using? Um, oh, gosh, it was just, I kind of took one thing at a time and anything from, um, I did Onsen training, which is an osteopathic alignment technique, um, was getting certified in that um, to help align the body like a chiropractor. Um, I did functional or training with a functional medicine doctor. I went through his school to get my nutritional degree. Um, and then I just kind of added things. There's some things in the energy world that you just have to start experiencing and talking to as many people as you can, because there's not actually, you know, classes for that. Um, when it came things like soul fragment type healing or body memory release, it was just me reading, talking to energy workers and healers and just straight on experience and, and getting as much as I could. Um, Cause some of those things just aren't being done anywhere. So. Right. No, and I, I respect that. I, I, from my point of view, I, I, I don't have any formal training of anything. I'm just a guy who tries things and reads a lot of books and talks to a lot of people and, <laughs> and uh, have figured a few things out. And so I, I deeply respect that, that educational process. And, um, and it's great that you've combined it along with certifications and degrees and things like that as well. So you've gone to a, a further place in in credibility than I have I, I and I appreciate that but I just you know I like to get a point of reference when it comes to you know we're we're going to get to know you I hope you find this enjoyable and you come back many times and we can go deep because there's so many things you touched upon that we could talk a long time about and I I'm I'm hoping that this platform that we're building is is going to be able to do just that, you know, create a place where we could talk about a, uh, a, a an obscure but important topic. Like you talked about oils and, um, you know, that's such a big word. You know, people say oils and it could mean anything from yeah. oil that you put on your salad to essential <laughs> oils distilled from 100,000 flowers to combinations of things to, I mean, it could also mean extracted oils that are, that are you know, processed away from from plants or exuded from plants so tell me what you uh you know it seems that you've got quite a talent or 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 a wealth of experience with with combining oils um we've got a few minutes to get into that i'd like to hear a little bit about what brought you to that and and uh why you find that so important um, yeah, I've always, I think I grew up using a lot of like young living essential oils, you know, and treating topically, you know, oh, you got a mosquito bite. So put on your tea tree or your lavender or whatever you need to treat that mosquito bite. And so I'd grown up doing a lot of that or gargling with tea tree if you had a sore throat, you know, so I knew that there were benefits to it. Um, and then as I really started studying more, I realized the internal properties that could be benefited from these as well as the external, as well as using them for, you know, aromatherapy or things like that, if you're doing incense. But um, really going on a deep internal level, I just, I just don't think that a lot of people were doing that. And so I started just understanding and learning about all these different oils. Um, I get all my oils that are 
edible and like organic. And then depending on whatever issue, so people say, okay, I've got depression, I don't know how to treat it. Then I'll pick the oils that I know are beneficial, have properties for that depression, muscle test the per person on those particular oils. And then that gives me how much to put in the bottle. And then I'll muscle test again on how many drops. So I end up creating a very specific medication, so to speak, for that person, um, which just isn't done. You know, you go to a doctor right. and they're like, oh, you're depressed. Have some yeah. capsule, 20 milligrams every day. Right. And how much do you weigh? Okay, I'll well, take yeah. this much. Yeah. Yeah. And it just does that. But I'm like, no, you know, your body is saying it wants these four particular oils in this particular order. And you're to take three of them whenever you're feeling sad. Nice. And there's no way to overdose um, on it. So it's not like there's there's ever really going to be any side effects besides like a stomach ache if you decide to chug the whole bottle. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Chinese soup medicine. You know, it's like you might not like the way it tastes, but you can't you can't OD on it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell people, I said, it kind of tastes like chewing on a plant, most of these, or maybe sucking on a little bit of dirt, but... <laughs> right, 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 right. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I, I am very much looking at going deep into a number of these topics. Erin, we're just about out of time. I knew this was going to happen, as it always <laughs> does, but at least I think we got a chance to to meet you, and, and uh, hopefully um, we'll get some questions, and um, I am looking forward to having you back. Um, I give every guest a chance to kind of uh, give yourself a shout out and let us know if you've got a particular message or, or something you want to announce or um, just how to get a hold of you. This is, this is your turn. Okay. Um, I guess the best way, could we stick my phone number or my website someplace that people can reach out to me? And I will put that in the, in, in once I get all these podcasts delivered and their own little pages, I will put those links in there for it. So Perfect. Yeah. when that happens, you'll be golden. Yeah. And people are more than welcome to, you know, check out my website or just text me. Um, I can do a lot of remote work, um, especially if it's, you know, energetic or even I can do muscle testing over the phone as well and, and mail people their medications. Nice. So, wow. um, yeah, I guess my biggest thing is that, you know, it, anybody that wants help, I love to help and I love to be able to be included on the journey. You know, we're all on our little journey and those that are wanting to do better and grow and change and um, be a benefit to themselves so they can benefit others. I guess that would be my shout out. I'm happy to join anybody on their journey that wants Fantastic. healing. Well, we certainly need more people like you. I appreciate you being here and uh, I feel like uh, we have a lot of work to do together. So um you know what we're doing i think what's happening is it's like a like a light a little beacon out there and when like-minded people see a beacon you go huh let's see what's over there and then you find something interesting you find a campfire and some good people sitting around it and you start sharing a meal and talking and, and sharing stories and everybody gets better for it and i think that's kind of what we're creating here and uh i'm i'm, I'm grateful uh, to troy for bringing you to us and uh, I look forward to doing this again. Uh, Aaron Wilkins, folks, and uh, I thank you guys all for joining us on the Healthy Living Podcast. We will see you next time.